This Sunday. This Sunday. Sunday. Side by side at the microphone from the green light to the speed trap. Chris Switzer and Ray Garino calls them as they see them, and you better believe them. Here, yeah. relevant news, biased opinions, and outright bullshit regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas, but mechanical trickery never before revealed over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrilled to the explosive tension as Chris and Ray cuss each other down the track and barrel roll across the finish line, laughing at certain disaster as they shake hands with the devil. All that and much more this Sunday at high noon on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the wizards of speed and live feed, Chris Switzer and Ray Garino. Bring the whole family. Kids under 12 get in free. Every Sunday at noon on WHPC. Take the Long Island Expressway to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the sign saying no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway. Go right on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. From 9 to 5, but you'll never catch me Doing that job of part-time All part -time. Oh, I wanna be is part-time part Yes, indeed, I never work a full day in my life Oh, no, I'm part-time yeah, well, you know what? We're not necessarily part-time in this show. We're kind of full-time plus overtime because, believe it or not, this stupid thing takes a lot more time than you might think. That's what I'm talking about is Motormouth Radio, Long Island's only automotive talk show with your hosts, Ray Guarino and the hard-working, diligent Chris Switzer. How are you, Chris? Oh, yes. Hard-working right here. Right yeah. here downstairs in uh, Motormouth Radio Central here at the Nutmeg State. Yes, I'm quite, quite the hard-working dude. Yeah, and and I got to really. tell you, that hardworking dude is a is a guy named Hollywood Joe. Hollywood Joe, who is that? You know who knows who he is, but I'll tell you what it's he's he's a local guy. Listen to this, Hollywood Joe. This is one of the CDs that I pick up. This was from Infinity Records. Our good friend Joe mm -hmm. over there. We got this right. uh, White Stone Records. You know, from uh, Whitestone, Stone. New York, which is where we have a lot of friends. Yes. The, uh, yeah, the, the, this thing was, I guess, uh, Whitestone Records is on Utopia Parkway in, uh, in Whitestone. So. In someone's basement. So Hollywood Joe, yes. even though he's got a Hollywood connection, also has a in New York a connection. So yes, and I, a Joe connection, too. I figured, yeah. hey, it's kind of rockabilly. The whole thing is 20-something, 20 24 like tracks it. on here. And it's all really rockabilly kind of stuff. And, uh, I love stuff like that. Yeah, me too. So that's... Uh, that's why I said, you know, I'll throw this in the uh, CD player. Well, you know, I was listening to it during the week as I drove, and uh, I said, this is going to be Sunday's music. Good enough. I'm, I'm sold. You got it. There used to be a rockabilly band I used to listen to back in the 90s called the Flat Duo Jets. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were cool. That's cool. It was a, it was a three piece. It was a guitar, you know, a, a Stratocaster, a, a, a stand up bass, and a drum. That was it. Right, right. And they were. And they were Big in the rockabilly scene and a lot of, a lot of that 50s look. It was cool. That it was, was cool. the big rockabilly 50s scene in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which I'm sure it's was. huge. Well, look, everybody had a pompadour and a, uh, and a ducktail anyway, so I'm sure they were, you know. Do you know there's like a rat rod convention that meets in Brooklyn, in Williamsburg? Under, under the, the uh, yeah, that's, of course I do. Yeah. That's, um, oh, sh Christian, Christian, I know Christian's listening. Christian, those, those guys, uh, uh, blah, 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 you know, I, I'm trying to think of Those name. guys are hardcore. They are, uh, some of the pictures and some of the cars I've seen, the I, mean, I want to go back to Brooklyn just to see that show. It's the Rumblers. And I went there, I went Rumblers. to like one of the first ones they did. And when it was a little smaller and it was absolutely it was something to behold. It really was. I believe it. I believe it. You know, it's it's funny because I appreciate those are one cars, one type of vehicle I appreciate, but I can never own. Yeah, <laughs> I can never own them. But boy, they look great. Just, sure. Just seeing some of that stuff, the the imaginations are just crazy. When you see some what they put together, so it's it's literally they're r literally rolling functioning junk piles, and right. they're and I'm saying that with the utmost. Uh, respect <laughs> because that's what they look like. It's like take everything and throw it all at some poor vehicle, and that's what you have is a is a rat rod. And I I to totally appreciate their their dirty, musty, rusted 
leaking mess <laughs> of, a, of a vehicle, but they look so cool. They're just awesome. It's funny because I want to talk about leaky, creaky, leaking messes today on this show as well. And if our listeners want to join in, they can do that by calling. I was going to say, you should see the doctor for that. Yeah, I'm going to, a doctor, I have a doctor appointment on Tuesday. <laughs> they can call 516 572 7440 or follow us on social media. That would be Motormouth Radio on the web, on Twitter, mm. and on Faccia Bruta Facebook and yes. Instagram. My favorite, Joe's, not Joe's favorite, is real underscore Motormouth Radio. So, which brings me to, um, you know, I want to, I have a little thing. Well, you know what? We have a little thing going on right here. Let's. I see that little thing going on right here. Yes. Let's see what we got. Let's go to the phones, go to the fun, say hi. You're on with the Motormouths. Good morning, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, Christian, what's happening? What's up, Charles, Christian? Yeah. Well, what's up there, yeah, brother? Boy, you've Good. been in the wind, huh? We haven't heard from you in a while. People were asking me, like, whatever happened to Christian? Is he still around? I'm like, you know. Yes, yes. I, yeah, I, I'm I actually been on a top secret mission for the past few months, and I figured maybe one day we'll come, I'll come in the studio and I'll officially announce what I got going on. Very good. We'd be uh, able. We'll, okay. Yeah. I got things brewing good. up. I just been on, on the down low. That's all. Sometimes you have to be on the down low just to get stuff done. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah. I've been throwing oh. little, I've been throwing little hints out there on the uh, IG. I, so I've been you know. seeing that and that's what kind of let me know that at least you were around. I saw the new handle, the new tag and all. I'm like, okay, that's yeah. kind of cool. Uh, if yep. you want to talk about that, feel free. Oh, no, I just, yeah, I just, well, basically just in business alone, just, uh, things had, uh, switched up a little bit. So, I was just in a phase of uh, transitioning. Not right. that way. Yeah, well, no, I know. Not that way. Yeah. <laughs> not that way. No. <laughs> bull joint. Bull joint. Bull joint. <laughs> phenolic. Phenolic. Right. Phenolic. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I just, yeah. Uh, I think I'm working on some stuff. I'm, I'm been working. I haven't stopped working ever. No. no. Um, I was just trying to do other things and see if uh, I was checking some other options out there. But, you know, it's such a weird time right now which i didn't think i'd really be saying that <laughs> but you know i still have so many ties to the history of long island and certain right. things so right. i'm kind of sticking to that minutia right as you would say right yes mm -hmm. so you know and pulling resources together and touching base with a lot of the you know my elders and mm -hmm. kind of making those contacts again and i'm going to start starting up some of the old stuff and bringing it out and about. Yeah, so. I noticed you did some of the videos you put on um, are, are were from for them from the past. A lot of Orient Express stuff and all. And it's, it's yeah, really, you know, we had a guy. Hint, yeah, I'd say we had a guy on the on plane and traffic a few weeks ago uh, who's from Summit. Uh, Summit Racing, mm -hmm. and what he does now is he's he's believe it or not a piston expert. Mm -hmm. That's so he came from uh, the motorcycle ranks and uh, Wisco. He he was he worked there, and I said, "Oh my god!" I said, "Any seventies bike we ever built?" I said, "Got Wisco pistons," and he smiled. And I actually mentioned you. I said, and we, "I mentioned Dorian Express in motion," and he was like, "Oh my god, you live right there!" I was like, "Ah, yeah, you're, you're like part." I said, "Look, I'm not part of history. They were history. I was just you are part of history. Yeah, yeah. I was right. just like driving. You past. just drove past it. <laughs> so, he was all around for that back then. The, yeah, no, and this guy, who's never set foot on." Long Island has very fond memories and knows the history very well. And, and uh, so, yeah, you're on the right path, Christian. Keep it up. You're doing the right yeah. thing. Oh, no, I will. Yeah. What was his name, though? Was it? it uh, do you remember his name? I'll send it to you. I, uh, I, you know what? I don't off the top of my head because I can't remember my wife's name right now because I'm. Because I was at the racetrack. <laughs> when I was, I was at Pittsburgh at the raceway. Yeah. Yeah. Track. Uh -oh. Up and down a Drake strip, you know, road racing. Ah, I guess. No, so I wonder if it was him. He's got a whole bunch of old bikes and stuff. Real, real old school guy. Knows a lot about. Yeah, the, the piston world is funny because I find myself getting more of the older stuff. Yeah, and having those resources, you know, to to have pistons made. I've had right. many pistons I've actually custom done for many different applications, and I'm still continuing to this day in flat track. Um, and it is when you break stuff. But oh, that's sure. when you know when you're you're in the right path. So you know the right. deal. Yep. Um, but it's funny because I'm also I've been going through a lot of stuff. I've been finding a lot of old stuff. That's why I've been posting a lot of old parts. I've been selling. Yes. Trying yes. to find the right people. And because I'm on the old drag bikes where they've gone, you know, on Facebook, I'm connecting. With, and I connected recently with uh, John Boa, who used to ride for O'Malley for Orient Express. So. 
now I'm starting to get the feeds of the history of that those days. Right. Uh, Terry Kaiser, Mr. Turbo yeah. um, oh, from yeah. Texas, Johnny Boy, Jimmy Cooper, Tony Lang, right. all the top fuel Harley guys and current guys like uh, you know Larry McBride, Elma Trent. So, Oh yeah, yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, right, uh, I just found out the, uh, our friend. Now th- th- this show. Now we've gone kind of um, not international. We, we're we're bi-statal. We're all over the country. I just got a text from a buddy in in Arizona who follows this show mm-hmm. and the Thursday night show. Isaac, Coach Isaac. He said the guy's name was Brian. He doesn't remember his last name. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a very short name. I remember that. But yeah, mm-hmm. so there's uh, there's ties everywhere, and, and and we need guys like you, Christian, to keep that the memories yeah. and the and the history well, Steve alive. Bearman. Steve Behrman's one of the original partners with Orient Express. He's in Arizona. Okay. He's currently down there. So um, I'm, lo- I'm looking for some other people. I'm looking for, uh, I'm trying to find out with uh, Fletcher. He was from the island. He, he ran a bike. Actually, Bob's trying to find him. So I'm just trying to reconnect a lot of these guys. And I've been pulling these resources, and I've been I've been uh, wheeling and dealing parts, and 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 trying to. I just basically got an old Magneto, an old Mallory Magneto for a KZ. I oh, needed nice. for the project I'm working on. So you know, I'm connecting with these guys, and I'm finding all these old parts and digging this stuff up, and I'm trying to dig up some of the older uh, drag bike stuff, some of the small tire stuff, and, and yeah. Yeah. You know, the the history is there for it, so this way I can, you know, basically get some people back into it a little bit, you know, right. get them on the older two strokes and, you know, yeah. that's all, you know. Very cool. That's all. That's a good song, too. By uh, It's a good line and a good song from uh, one of our like favorite bands. That sounds like quite a project. You know, now we, need, mm-hmm. now we need some sort of periodical or something, Christian. Right. I mean, like some sort of either a website or, or a book. Oh, uh, well, be. well yeah. It. It's in the book. So. Christian, what's the together, uh, I, what, what's the new handle on on Instagram so people can find you and follow you and see the stuff? Uh, count it's it, well, I have I have an account called Count Dragula, right? And I was trying to get that account onto the LA Racing account, but I couldn't really do that. So that technically, it's Count Dragula, and I believe either it's Count Dragula underscore thirty two or I'm Count Dragula thirty two. It, it may be an underscore, yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be underscore, but right. I had to do underscore. that. Yeah, to say it like that, yeah. <laughs> to maintain that old account I had since the Mock Modified days, because that's right. where most of my followers are, and just you know to keep people in check and just keep the keep a wet edge on everything. That's right. What I've been doing, right. but I've been laying low because I've been trying yeah. to. Uh, um, I've been doing a lot of renovating, a lot of rebuilding, and, and, and yeah. building up a whole other aspect of of this industry where it's it's in an areas that will uh, get to one area for the racing, which is still continuing. Mansion, but bread and butter, and then on the back side is the the historical part. I, I and it's funny because I have some paint work I need done, and I just hit up Gary uh-huh. um, for those from the island who know the local brush. Mm-hmm. So I asked him, I said, "Listen, I have something I needed painted from period correct time. Who was around back in that? So I'm trying to pull even the painters in for he's, the resources. Yeah, you know, he's a yeah. perfect guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know, and well, this." He, he's perfect for that because he was from that area too, in that era. You right, know, right. motion. When you said motion, and early, early sure. trade. He worked out of that building. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. yeah, I'd love to catch up with you offline one day when you get when you get a chance. When you get a, yeah. you know, you get a free moment. Give me a buzz. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, like I said, I've just been very busy. I just, I've been, I've been, I, li- I listen. Sometimes I don't call, but I'm, you know, I like to let other people get involved too. I'm not, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. not here just to take up all your time. No, but no, not at all. I figured. Uh, it's fine. I'll get back on the air with you one re- uh, very soon, yep. you know, and uh, then I'll officially release the uh, situation just yeah. so everyone knows, you know, the hints are out there. You got <laughs> it. All right, Christian. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, all good. Talk Bye. to you soon. Take Bye-bye. care, my brother. Be safe. All right. That was Christian from Long Island Racing and other adventures uh, soon to be unveiled. It's uh, yes. good to hear from you. Yeah. Cool. Very excited. I love Long Island history. I think it's just there's so it's so rich. It's just, you know, it's just awesome. Growing up here, I always thought, you know, this was it. I mean, when you grow up in a place, you don't really get out. You know, you think that that's that that's it. Because uh, you're on an island. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I don't care. You could be in Iowa. You know, anywhere. You know, you, that's that's your world. That is your world. Right. Sure. Uh, Rob and I were just yeah, talking. About I was from the, Brooklyn. It was the same plot of yeah. dirt. <laughs> now, Rob and I were just talking before the show about the Long Island music scene and all, and and how some of it went out, some of it didn't, and a lot of it was just low. And I said that's how you can quiz people. Like you could do is quiz Chris with Brooklyn. I had lunch with our two friends, Rick and Cliff, uh, just the other day. We we tied up the diner for like over three hours. You know, just 
<laughs> talking. You retired guys, boy. I got it licked. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, well, nothing else to do. But we would t- like with them. They were talking about stuff, and and I said with with Rob, all you gotta do is quiz somebody on like the Long Island music scene or the food scene. I said you'll know right away if they were from here because sure. you know they may know other facts, but that minutia is what's gonna uh, you know uh, separate you. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but I oh, tell yeah. you something else. Yeah, I want to talk about what you, you got. Some, I, I, you got I, I always said. I always said that uh, even growing up in Brooklyn, I always thought everybody grew up that way. I thought everybody grew up the, the individuals that grew up on Long Island or grew up in Brooklyn or the que- or Queens or the boroughs or whatever. Have you. I always thought everybody grew up that way, and then I realized nobody grew up that way right. other than us. Right. Exactly. That was it. Exactly. <laughs> there was us and the rest of the country. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. So, so uh, yeah. So let me there divert and throw a little car content in here. Uh, oh, this is a car show? Yeah, I noticed. Yeah, yeah. Th- this is something that's been... Now I'm getting really ticked off uh, because oh. this is now going to be the fourth time. <laughs> We've been doing this 20 years. You're already getting ticked off now. Well, again, yeah, today, this week. Uh, right. I Just the other day, I was using the FJ You know, pretty much every... Uh, almost every day. And uh, if I don't use it for a month or so, I had a, I had an issue where like, you know, the, the battery went a little flat on me. didn't want to start. I said, okay, maybe because I didn't use it. So I charged it and it was cool. But I had put, I'm putting interstate batteries in this truck. And I'm using okay. the Megatron, the green Megatrons, the new ones, not the refab ones, the refurb ones. I've used those what? in other cars, but I'm buying the top shelf stuff. And I had three, You buying a top shelf battery? Yeah. You? And I had Holy three of them already that had ended up with bad cells. And I had to bring back and they warranted it. So just the other day, I go to take the truck out after I'd used it the day before. I noticed it, it didn't crank as fast as it does when it's got that nice hot charge it was just a little slow but it but it started i said okay you know meant note to self it wasn't you know 20 degrees out it was you know maybe like 40 so it shouldn't have done that well right. yesterday the day now yesterday i go to use it again and i go in and it cranked kind of slow i had to hit the key again and it was like click click click, click. nope I had to go in get my jump starter put it on boom fires okay. right up okay it charges everything's fine same thing today jump start it so it's probably a bad sell again, and I'm going to go back to Interstate, get another battery, but I'm ready to just buy. I remember years ago when the auto parts store by my house had a big sign that said, we no longer sell AC Delco batteries. Ask us why. So, of course, really? I asked them why, and I got the litany of how they were crap. They weren't like they used to be. They weren't warranty and blah, blah, blah. Well, now the Interstates, and I've heard from other people, they've had problems too, and I'm, I've had it. I'm ready to go to another brand of battery, but... To what? I may actually go. I've heard Dora lasts are very good, so I may go and do yeah, that. Yeah, that's you know? the one that's marketed by. It's one Walmart. of the Walmart. No, no, Wal- no, not by Walmart. I think it's uh, Dora lasts. Maybe through AutoZone. AutoZone. Okay. I mean, certainly other places could sell it too. You know. I have to uh, admit, I I have an issue. I had an issue with the the battery in the Explorer, which was only three years old, and I I had that problem trying to get the codes to. Oh yeah, uh, right. To clear to right, right. to uh, get it to uh, be uh, tested, right? The emissions test, and I had a problem with the O2 sensors, and it was it was a battery issue of all things. We got a battery to tie it in to my other subject. We got a battery at the shop for the Corvette for the C4, mm-hmm. and it was an AC Delco brand new battery. And put it in the car, and I got the key. Nothing. I got nothing. Like, what the heck is going on? I put a, a meter on it. it. It was like two volts. It was like, <laughs> this is a new battery? So wow. we, we put the charger on it, and, and we got the car to crack. But Mike brought it back and said, no, give me another one, and got another one yesterday, and that one was, was fine. So, like, what the heck is going on with batteries? I don't know. Wow. That is that is true. Holy smokes. Yeah, so, I, do, I do not know. And it's kind of funny because the tracker is cranking slowly, and I was told that's a new battery that was in there as well hey, from the seller. But you who know, can believe the seller of a vehicle? I'll tell right? you what. And just remember this. Everything was new once. 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 <laughs> it was it was a yeah, new battery. When? Yeah, when when your grandfather was driving? In 1993. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was a new battery. So, <laughs> so speaking of my other woe, speaking of the uh, the Corvette, we had an issue. I got it all back together and we were trying to get it going to get it running yesterday and and you know, work out all those little, you know, just make sure the tune up was good. Right. And it started but it was running like a bag of crap. I mean like so bad. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bad. Uh so oh, we're we're investigating. But I tell you what, we're gonna investigate something else too. Let's investigate the phones and the fun. We'll see. Fart. 
We'll go on the phone and say hi, Quill. You're on with the motor mouths. Hey, good afternoon, Ray. Good afternoon, uh, Chris. Bobby, what's hey, happening? Bob. Hey, hey how are you? All right. All right, good, good. I, I was listening to your uh, conversation about the batteries. Okay. Talk and to I, us. Uh, yeah, I... I uh, Why is everybody's phone cutting out today? I don't know. <laughs> Bobby, you're still there. We're losing you. Oh, boy. Wow. Bob? Robert? Uh, all right. We'll have to have Bob call back because this is... Yes. Uh, that's, I, I, think, uh, I think he dropped his phone. <laughs> or yeah. we dropped ours. I don't know. Right. 516-572-7440. There's your phone number to get a hold of us right here. At Motormouth Radio on this fine, upstanding Sunday... It's not bad out there. But, yeah, it's uh, pretty good. Uh, but, you know, but you tell me about your tales of well, the, the car's running like a bag of dirt. Yeah, it was running, it running really bad. It didn't want to idle, and I've, I've, I'm convinced it's this little baby. What are you holding? Can there? you tell? Can that's, you see that? That's an IAC valve. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. One of those bad boys. How dirty was it? You know, the throttle body. I, I pulled the throttle body off. And of course, it is carbon, so I cleaned that. I'm gonna, I'll post the pictures of that. Uh, but this little baby, I went to the uh, Mike had actually got a factory service manual for the car, which is great. Nice, and I have another Chilton's I had borrowed from Rick. So they all say that there's, of course, three versions of the IAC valve one, uh-huh. one has a solid taper, the other one has a dual stage taper, and the other one is a blunt end. Okay. So right. they said if there's a collar by the thing, no, there's no collar. They said what you do basically is you can you measure from the mounting surface to the end of the pintle, and it should be an inch and an eighth. If it's, that's the standard, or is that the one just specifically for that unit? Well, that's for this, and I looked up. I think I was looking up for another car, and it was also the same. I think for a Camaro, okay. for a T, you know, it's a tune port motor. Right. So of course this one's an inch and three eighths, which means <laughs> the pintle is out in is obstructing the airflow too right. much. Not letting it idle. Which, of course, will give it a crappy idle. So they say sure. you can adjust it. And what you can do is you either take it and just push the pintle back, which this one doesn't move. And they said, or you can you, you push it and use a back and forth rocking motion. That didn't work. They said sometimes they thread. So you try to turn it. No, this one didn't turn. So I think it's just frozen is what I think. Uh, um, Got to get to the bottom of that. Is the fr- there two screws on the front of it? This thing? No, there's a four pin connector. Really? So it, just a four pin electrical connector, no screws. You whatsoever. can't open it up. Huh? No, because a lot of times there's worm gear in there too. Well, yeah, it's a little stepper motor. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the problem. But now we're at the venture in in with this car right now of what has been done to it and what needs to be done, and how much more do you want to do? Exactly, you've reached that precipice. We're at that at that level, and and I mm-hmm. think I think this does need to get done because if you're not going to go on with the project and sell it, you want to have it running. Right. Let's see if we can pick up Bob again. Yes, hello, hey, Bob. I, you're still I with must us. Have lost you. Yeah, you you, you were you, you felt your call drop, so we had a we had a drop you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I didn't hear you. On, you know, I wasn't listening to the radio. But, but basically, I was trying to sum it up where I had 20, 40 batteries, 20 of each type, and the batteries were all different weights for the same number. So some were two kilos off, which is about four and a half pounds, and some were you know, just like a pound off. It didn't make sense. You have 20 of the same batteries, 20 of the same numbers. How could they be different weights? Right. That's the only time that's happened. That happened to me last month. So... Uh, I'm very leery about batteries today and how they last. I've, I've actually, in the last couple of years, replaced them in all my cars under warranty and then had to get new ones. Right. I have to say, Interstate is great for replacing, and the guys over in Albany are... Uh, That's it. You know, I mean, yeah, they do a good job, but it is strange that batteries aren't holding up the way they used to. Uh, I, and I don't know why, because you know I have a vehicle with a good charging system. Everything is fine. And like I said, and it's been a dead, a bad sell each time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I'm really and, and disheartened. On, yeah, and on the on the other side of the coin, my dad has a '96 or old Aurora that's been laying in the garage. So I went over and you know got it running for him and stuff. And he has a, a battery, an Interstate that's behind, under the back seat. Yeah. Of course, you know, vented and a really big battery. Right. 
And I looked at the date and I said, my gosh, this battery is 10 years old. Yeah. So I went over to interstate <laughs> before, you know, I charged it for a day, went to interstate. I had them check the load and the cells. And the guy said to me, this battery is in perfect condition. Leave it. He said, I can't wow. believe it. He said, he said, and it looks, it looks great. And he says, and I have it in the car and you know, it's been 20 degrees at times. I've been starting it every week in, in December and January, you know, just to run it. And the battery is fine. So there you have one battery that lasts 10 years yeah. and it's been sitting around. And then you have another battery that, you know, kind of kind of croaks at 18 months. You know, Bob, I've, t- I've told the story in the show before. I'll make it quick. Back in the day, going back in the, through the 80s, late 80s, well, the, through the 80s into the 90s when my friend Gerard was at North Shore Tire, they sold batteries and, and tires and all sorts of stuff and they always had a pile of batteries and what the guys would do is when they pulled a battery out of a car that they felt was good or the car had still started they put those in a separate pile because they were reusable somebody could use that battery and we used to use them i didn't buy a battery for i think 10 years because <laughs> you go over there and you just throw your battery like great and they had a couple customers i remember there's this one older fellow uh i think it was italian and in a, in a, he had, had a new caddy and every like two or three years or three years, he'd come in and say, you know, I need I need my battery replaced. Okay, well, you know, why? How old? Well, no, no, it's not it's not bad. It's not a problem. It's just that it's coming up on three years, and I don't want to take a chance. So that one went out. And that went in the premium good pile of good battery. <laughs> and I tell you, I've uh, used batteries like that. I think probably for eight or ten years back. Wow, but that's yeah. back then. That's back then. I guess when you get a good one, you know, for some reason it. Uh, it holds up. I, you know, we were kind of old school. We would say, um, hey, uh, every five years, whether the battery was good or not, we we would replace it. Now I'm looking at it every three years. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't you don't want to get stuck. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, I'm just hearing the other. Of course, uh, Skipper saying uses the AGM batteries. Those are very good. They're more expensive. The absorbed glass mat. They are more expensive. They are more stable. I think. And I know some guys like you know Chassis John used to swear by the Optimum Red Tops and the L Tops. Yeah. By nothing but those. And again, those are even more expensive on another level. Right. Um, so yeah, I. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, I'll figure it out. I know. Uh, if we if, if we figure it out, let. let let us all know. I but don't know. I'll tell you I what. I have to say that I'm still using Interstate because, yeah. I mean, the the availability and the pricing and the lo- and being local here yep. today to the area, you know, Costco has great pricing on batteries. And yep. If you have a problem, you run over to Interstate and they just take care of it. So I'll be back again, this week. What, yeah, what <laughs> choices are out there? You know, I know you were just talking about a few, but well, yeah. there aren't the, 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 the multitude of choices we used to have. Right. There are some store brands. But yeah, uh, luckily right. I have two good jump, jump packs, two good jump starters that could <laughs> jump a car if it had no battery in it. So, you know, oh, that's good. keep that around and then uh, we're in good shape. So, all right, Bob. All right, well, guys, have a great show. Thank you very much. All right, Bob. Thanks. Talk, talk, talk to you, you soon. soon. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bob. All right. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what Taylor Wall with batteries. Yeah, he's right. He's right. There's, there seems to be a battery issue. I, I don't know what's the quality of the components that are compromised. You never know. Right, you right. You never know what, what's what's going on out there. Yeah. But yeah, it's you buy cheap, you get cheap. That's for sure. And those two batteries that you mentioned those are quality batteries that sure. will cost you. Sure. So, so yeah, it all depends on what you want to do. What how how you feel about putting a battery in your car and relying on it relying well, on the thing to start I've, I've i can do it pretty fast now you know it's it's uh it, it works out pretty quick because you've had it out a couple times let's uh, sure. let's see if we can seek a call in let's say hi call you're on with the motor mouths hey guys tom from massapequa good morning what's up tom what's up tom hey, hey guys is there any reason to use a marine battery in an automobile uh yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, I know people used to do that because they're deep cycle batteries, but I think if you live in Alaska, yeah, here, no, not so much. <laughs> Truthfully, no, that's, you know, because they're deep cycle batteries. <clears throat> okay. All it, right. And, that's, and the other... You know, go on. What's the other thing? thing was the gentleman that just called in about having the exact same battery with different weights, it sounds like... Weight of the battery may make a difference in the technical spec of it. There's probably a spec, and I bet you the quality control varies out of spec. And maybe the weight, if there's someone in your listening audience, is there a way that you could 
maybe weigh your battery when you buy it to see that it's within the right spec of that battery? I've never seen that spec listed. And I tell you, I've been at this interstate shop a lot of times because we use them from the shop as well. So they know us. And I've asked those guys some pointed, direct questions, even on their refurb batteries, about how do they do it. And would you like to come on the radio and talk about that? And they're like, no. No, 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 no. And, 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 and I don't know how we do it. The guys in the back do it. Yeah, well, you know what? I know you were doing it before you came. You were a guy in the back before you were a guy in the front. So they kind of keep that kind of hush-hush. I don't know if it's just that place, but, yeah, we're not talking about national secrets here. I mean, you find those in the back of any garage with a Corvette in it these days. I don't know. So yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say, Tom. I guess, yeah, you could weigh it. I mean, I know when I pick them up, man, these the batteries are kind of heavy. They're not, they're not light, so... But you also know there's simple construction. It's just lead, lead acid lead plates. sandwich. It's right. a lead sandwich, basically. That's that that they stack them all up. So if, if if it's lighter, if it's a lighter unit, then there's less lead or less component in there. So Tom has got a point. Yeah, I see where you're going with this, Tom. So I understand. Yeah. I got to tell you, the interesting. I bet you're on your show with the uh, with the breath of people somewhere. We may uncover this, and it may be something to consider in the future. And maybe that's why they're not talking about it at Interstate. But I, but the next thing is, I have a technical question. I'm not that technical with the lingo, all right? So you mentioned the word uh, pinkle. Is that a, a technical term or is it a Yiddish slang? It's both. <laughs> it's both. It depends who, it depends who it you're talking to. It means the same thing. It, it depends who you're talking to, yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the technical term? I don't expect you guys to uh, translate Yiddish. No. The, well, no. The in in in, in car speak, the pintle is the technical term, and what it is for those who don't know, it's actually it's, it. Here we go. It's gonna it's gonna play right into what you're thinking. It's a shaft with a head on it, that kind of like a mushroom shaped head, if you will, in this case, and it moves in and out of the body. And in this case, it meters air because it's the idle air controller. And, Tom, so. you don't need to have a briss. Right. <laughs> right. All and right. also, well, you, guys, have a, you have I, a pintle in the fuel injector, too. There's also, that's the actual needle valve that moves in and out to open and close the, the orifice to let more or less fuel flow. So, you see the tie-ins well, we have on this show? Well, it's interesting because it's really funny because I know you guys usually speak Guido, right. and now you're talking Pintle in Yiddish, and this morning I happened to listen to the rabbi on ah. your station. So it's all, you know, I guess today's Yiddish then. Right. <laughs> well, you know, and Chris was from Brooklyn, so they, uh, they co-mingled quite freely in that borough. Tom, yeah. got the new one. Hey. Thanks, guys. Thank you, all right, guys. All right, Tom. Thanks. <laughs> so, all right, that was Tom from Massapequa. Hey, all right, you know what? That takes us up to the bottom of the hour. I got to talk about weather. We have uh, today, Ooh. it's, yeah, clouds. They say rain's coming in late in the afternoon, 43 degrees. Tonight, heavy rain at times, low 38. Ooh. Tomorrow, they were talking about like snow squalls, kind of. Oh, please stop. I don't oh, want to hear yeah, it. Yeah, also, you know, slushy mixtures and stuff like that. So, I Aye. guess, uh, <laughs> eh, you know, it's... Hey, don't talk to me about that. No, I don't want to hear it. So, no, I don't either. So, I'll, I'll tell you about something else. I'll tell you about... Tell me. Tower to... Well, our, our weather is, of course, it's sponsored, uh, powered by Pantano's Gourmet and Hewlett... Uh, uh, Uniondale and Garden City Park. So, we have to say... I like that. the way you don't pop your peas when you power your Pantano. I try not to, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you should also listen to Tower Talk Business Radio on this fine station Thursdays at 3 p.m. Tower Talk highlights the best of Long Island by providing all-access interviews with top entrepreneurs and local business owners who will discuss a range of topics that impact both owners and executives alike. And they also have people from the college on there sometimes talking about, uh, you know, college. I know Pat Ryder, our oh. police commissioner, has been on and, you know. But they all want to know. They ask when they're in from Tower Talk. They always say, "Hey, what was the honor group of the hour this week?" Because I missed it. So, <laughs> what was it? Well, of course, today today's Tower Talk technical uh, tribunal is the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. And today, if you are an individual that enjoys using steering wheel covers on your steering wheel. Are you the type that needs a slick steering wheel cover to either protect the wheel from cracking or to hide the cracks that are already there? Or are you into that classic sports grip lace on the steering wheel cover with the fake leather and the same color wraparound plastic lanyard lace that never seems to wear out? It's just always there. 
Or maybe you're into one of those warm, fuzzy, plushy steering wheel covers that feel like you're holding a hairy, steel-belted radial tire when you drive. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. So if you're into wrapping that sexy leather-wrapped rubber band around your steering wheel for that exotic feel, then you were part of the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. Nice. There you go. Nice. Uh, Mark, Mark Russo just sent us a, a link to which the best battery to buy. I wonder if Project Farm did that. He's one of those guys on YouTube who does a lot of what's the best X thing to buy, whether it be a drill, a saw, a battery, jeans. Oh, wow. He did a whole, and he does like destructive testing. He'll do, uh, you know, all sorts of different kind of put, put the mechanisms through all sorts of different tests, even waxes. And he did ceramic coats uh, a little while ago. Very so cool. I wonder if it's true. I'll have to check that out. All right. So listen, we're going to go back to Hollywood Joe, of course, from uh, our good, our good right. friends up in the White the Stone. And um, who was the song? Who did it? Uh, it was, uh, yeah, Set Me Free. Um, Vanilla Fudge, right? Well, let's Vanilla see. Vanilla Fudge. And before that, it was Girl Group. Uh, oh, the Girl Group. and Supremes. Oh, Diana Rush. Yeah, I think the Go-Go's might have done the version. Well, anyway, that you're not going to hear that now. It's not even the same song, but the name is the same. So what are we going to say? So we'll we'll hear a little bit of Hollywood Joe, and it's we'll, funny. You uh, would remember the Vanilla Fudge version. I would remember the Diana Ross and Supremes version. Of same song. Absolutely. <laughs> See, people who know us know that that's part and parcel with what that's, we are. Yes, exactly. exactly. That's a perfect explanation of of this yeah. team. All right, so let's kick it off. We'll take a little break. We'll be back after these messages on ninety point three WHPC. Hit it, Joe. Coming up at 12 o'clock today, Sunday, Motormouth Radio, Ray Guarino, Joe D, talking about cars. And like I said, you don't have to know anything about cars to enjoy the show. People watch cooking shows, don't know how to cook. People watch those home repair shows, they don't know how to fix anything. So Motormouth Radio is the same thing. Think about it that way. This show on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision with two locations in Limbrook and Oceanside who remind you that New York State law says you always have the right to choose which shop will fix your car. Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision offers a full range of services. 24-hour towing between Montauk and Manhattan, shuttle service, and they can help you with a rental car arrangement if needed. All repairs include the Car Star Lifetime Nationwide Warranty, ensuring that the experts at Celebrity Chase Collision are always on your side. Y si, hablamos español. More information is available at 516-593-0920 or online at CelebrityChaseCollision.com. You're listening to the Motor Mouths. Hey, how's it going? First time caller here. Everybody on a Sunday, work on your car and listen to the show. Hey, it's you. always a pleasure. Chris, I didn't get to chat with you. This is a great show. I'm checking off all the boxes. Motor Mouth. Hey, I don't mess with stock. Stock stinks. He was under a car or under somebody else's car. I wanted to commend you on your, your selection of music. Motor Mouth. Cars are for driving, not for eating. It. Even if Ray is talking to Chris on the phone. Motor Mouth. In the same room, I'm doing my show. Get some advice on getting my lawnmower to start up. Our trained staff of two will help. And typically, we don't work on that kind of car. Yeah, I was going to call in and your guest mentioned my dilemma. Quite frankly, there are better things to do with your time. <laughs> Every Sunday, 12 o'clock, my phone goes, Motor Mouth Radio. Yeah, I want to know what the <laughs> is wrong with my car. Nobody knows your cars like you. Ray was here early, but then he had to go through this thing that he does on Sundays. And what do you have, like nine people listening to you right now? Motor Mouth. Millions of listeners, so, nine paying attention. Hush your mouth and play some more good music you just went for two plus hours on thursday talking about mm-hmm. cars and stuff i want to see you do two minutes because <laughs> you are yeah. a motor mouth my friend <laughs> I, I am i am a motor mouth <laughs> and let's face it there are answers sometimes correct ones and we may have them motor mouth radio 90.3 fm whpc motor mouth Hey you, get over here. Every Sunday, 12 to 1, you are going to tune in to hear the motor mouths, my friends Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer. 90.3 FM, WHPC. You might learn something. Yeah. You might learn something. I learned that these guys, the guys that backed Hollywood Joe, have some pretty damn good guitarists. Yeah. This guy's playing I like that. I like the way that, that started. I mean, kind of like Robert Gordon almost. Right. 
I mean, I can see hearing that like in a local bar or club or, you know, something like that. I mean, maybe that's why they never got to be big time. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> Put Hollywood Joe in, uh, in the save pile. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Stuff Put it in the out. rotation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like I was saying, um, it, it's a good topic that people, other people, have talked about, which is when to uh, answer the phone. I guess it's let's, always the good thing. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go to the phones and say hi. You're on with the motor mouths. Hey guys, good afternoon. Hey Skip, what's happening? What's up, Skipper? Uh, got a little bit of news uh, relating to the uh, Purple Nomad. I had been at a cruise night, and I was leaving it, and as I pulled out, I pulled out onto a road like lightning to uh, Sunrise Highway, and to meld into the traffic, of course, I had to jump on it to get it going. And the cruise little, all of a sudden, I'm looking in the rear view to make my transition into the middle lane, and I'm noticing swirling smoke behind the car. Uh-oh. Ooh. Now... The history of this motor, of course, is a brand new ZZ454 GM crate motor with it's got to be less than 10,000 miles, 5,000 miles on it, I want to say. Now, when it had just been up in New York being worked on by my buddy Mike, uh, he had done all fluid changes and updates and so on and so forth. At one point, he had an issue where he couldn't get the car started and didn't know why and realized that the oil had been overfilled because the car was on an angle when he drained it and he didn't get it all out, but he put the full seven quarts in. Long story short, uh, I diagnosed that I saw blow by from the breather on the valve cover, and that was along with the smoke as I would jump on it and as I would let off. Okay. Well, I pulled the PCV valve, and this thing was stuck harder than a, a sword and stone. I mean, this thing just didn't want to move. And then I, I got it wiggling and it moved. And I did the old test. I blew in the bottom where it would suck up and it blew sure. through to the elbow. But then I blew through the elbow and it blew back through back into where it would go in the valve cover. That was not a so good thing. That it was a bad PCV. So uh, I bought a new PCV. I bought a new uh, breather, put them on. Took the car out for a run. What's with the phones today? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's dropping out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't That's know what's so happening. It's uh, you would think it's not on the on the board's end, but uh, yeah. Wow. Let's, mm. let's see if we. Uh, yeah, he's still connected. Wow. So yeah, that, that you know something like that is when you when you look at a problem like that, we have we are blowing smoke. First thing you look at is a PCV. Right. And uh, you know. Because you don't want to look at the rings. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> no, no, right. Look at the PCV first. The, the general rule of thumb has always been if you see a car, if you're behind a car and you see smoke, if if the car smokes on acceleration, it's usually something with the rings or the cylinders. And okay, if it smokes on decel, then you usually look up at the valves or the valve guides or something where it's sucking it back through. That's always been the general rule of thumb I followed, which has always been kind of, you know, it, 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 I like it, it worked out. Yeah. All right, we're back. I lost it. Yeah, no, I lost it. Uh, you know something with the phones today. Everybody who's called has been dropping in and out. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. So I don't well, know if everybody's I don't know using what you heard up to. Yeah, to the go- to the gory, gruesome part about the PCV, and I was just explaining how the difference between acceleration and decel smoking. So uh, we're waiting for yeah, the punchline. Well, along I guess. with that, once I I took it out, drove it, and with the new PCV, I eventually had the snow smoke level lower, 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 lower to where I think it's negligible now. But I think I'm at the point where I still might have some uh, fouling on the plugs, of course, from what went on. So I think it's going to take a little while to burn them off because there's no way in hell that I can bend over and change these plugs. Uh, It was hard enough, believe it or not, to get the PCV (sighs) out of the back of the valve cover. You know, I'll tell you this, and this is why I keep, I still have the old school style spark plug blaster that was in every shop and and, and auto shop because it works. It really does work well on a spark plug. But when the deposit gets crusted too hard (laughs) and too strong, You'll never get it off. It, it's yeah, I mean not by the plug. not by driving. But I do know that if if it is able to be removed by driving, the way to do it is by slow, steady increase under load, not by tromping it. Because when you tromp it, cylinder temperatures goes up and it actually 
you know, like heats it and bakes it, bakes it on and bakes it on. So it's slow, steady, you know, incline type of uh, uh, under load will help clean that stuff off. Okay, right. That's an object. I'll get it out on the uh, the highway, so to speak, and I'll uh, gradually go uh, up because the limit is seventy five to begin with. So I'll start out slow and yeah. You know, let's skip. So, throw in. This is a good time to throw in some mechanic in a can. Throw in some like you know. A, the carburetor cleaner or yeah, I'll, tell you Lucas. What, I'll tell you what I've been using yeah, I'll tell you and I okay. Lucas is what I wanted and at Walmart they sell Lucas it's about 15 bucks a can but Walmart has their own brand and it's like $9 a can and I did the comparison it's exactly really? it's the same stuff oh wow good to know so save the uh, the 6 bucks and you know buy the, the Walmart I'm, I'm going to go look in the cabinet right now for the uh Stuff I'm thinking of. What am I, uh, oh, there's gum out. Tune up in a can. Yeah, yeah. I and, have some of that. Anything that has an astringent, you know, like an acetone base or any kind of a, uh, you know, a, a cleaning agent. That's what you want. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, the best thing I, it would be to really to change the plugs, get them out of there. Well, but, of uh, course, of yeah. course. And the sad part was those were part of what was done when the tune up was done on the car. Oh, brand sure. new plugs. Right. And those are the. Uh, they're not the iridiums. They're the you don't need iridiums in that motor. That you actually no, no, don't no, have no, the ignition. I which ones they were? It's a, it's a good plug. Platinum? though. It's a high grade plug. See, it's probably a platinum. That's some, I would lean uh, toward I, that. I'll tell you, I did a lot of research on that for my own car, and I was going to go with the with the higher, better metal plug. And they said, no, don't do it on a car that doesn't have a DIS ignition. If you have anything like oh. HEI, they they still recommend copper plugs are really kind of the what you need. I believe it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's well, what like I, that's I told you. I was really surprised when I did the Chrysler, the 300 Hemi, and that just has the uh, Copper Plus plugs in it. That's surprising. Yeah. That is surprising. Yeah. But, uh, but the car runs like a dream right. ever since I, I changed all 16 plugs. Sure. sure. And uh, re silicone the, the leads and all, and uh, that car yeah, does yeah. run great now. Uh, Not that ran bad before, but I don't. I didn't throw a coat again. So that's that's something, Chris. I hope now when you know, we fired up this Corvette and it was running terrible, and I saw all the carbon in in the throttle body. Mm -hmm. That's one car. God help me! I never want to change the plugs in that thing again. <laughs> it's like oh yeah, well, at least Once. at least half of them I don't want to do again. <laughs> Actually, there's two of them I never want to do again. That's <laughs> six and eight. I just, yeah, that's what I'm going to take a block of C4. Stuff for? I, I it just popped in my head. I think I had some of that too. What's that? Skip ski sea foam. Sea foam. Sea foam is very good, but yeah. you know they they have uh, a couple different products. Make sure it's uh, it's labeled as like a carburetor or fuel system cleaner. Oh, Max. There was a Max. What the hell was that? Because I had a bottle of this other stuff too. It is uh, It came with a, a, a fuel injector cleaner, <laughs> and this was a, a dual bottled kit. Right, right. Uh, this, that's it. Uh, Max engine. Here we go. Okay. Bump, 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 bump. Yeah, if you go to the shelves in the auto parts store, they'll, they'll have like formula. 20, sometimes like 20, 30 products that do that. Yeah. Z Max is what this stuff was called. You know, one of the ways of doing it that works really well is you get a product that you induce, like you would take the vacuum, the hose off the vacuum booster. So you have direct manifold right. vacuum, and you induce it right into the engine with manifold vacuum. That kind of goes mainline. And, and that uh, was like when they did the original uh, cleaners for the uh, uh, injectors. Exactly. Same thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And the, 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 the mechanics of the GM, they had special machines and tools, but now you can, they made it so you, know, you can do that in your driveway. And, and on a carbureted car, it's, it's, it's even easier because you don't have to bust into the fuel rail or anything. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, well, good luck All with right, that. So Hopefully, I'll keep you posted how that works out. I, I'm, yeah. I'm hopeful that I got it nailed, and uh, that was yeah. the initial problem. As long as I'm not burning any more oil and stuff, because I know it had to be sucking it in through that PCV and fouled it and gummed yeah. it up and whatever. Yeah. So, you know, but and it could come down to good. there were no knocks, there were no noises. So, yeah. I'm thankful for that because my first thought, of course, was that I had a cracked ring or something, and you know, I go right to DEFCON four. So, <laughs> I wonder, you know, I wonder if it's going to come down to the like the parts chain, the problem we've had with parts. Maybe that PCV was an offshore part that was not up to the same specs as like a Delco PCV. Sure, good. Sure, yeah, that's been. possible. And the thing is that the one I got, the replacement. Uh, I got it in O'Reilly's. What the hell is this thing? It's a uh, MicroGuard PCV valve. Oh. And the funny part is, 
this has that 90 degree bend on uh, uh, on yeah. the top. Uh-huh. Well, when he opened the box, I didn't realize it, but it's a regular PCV, and then it's that plastic piece is the it 90 goes, degree that goes on top of it. Yeah, let's, that's, let, that lets the part cover a lot of different applications because it could be a straight well, end or a 90, top. yeah. Right, it's got the one for the Ford also with the dual uh, right, right, right. vacuum lines on it. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I had to press that on in the vise. I couldn't get oh, it wow. on by hand. Oh, boy. See, now, if you didn't do that, you'd have a vacuum leak. Well, without a doubt. So, yeah, that without was good. That at least you you know, you know had the fourth. I mean, a lot of people would never know to do that. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. It, right, well, good. Natural. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that one, and we'll, uh, yeah, keep us posted. Yeah, we'll keep you in, in, the, in the loop, so All to right. speak. Thanks, Skip. All right, guys. All right. Have a great rest Thanks, of the day. All right. So long. How about this? Okay. Bye. All right. Boy, you know what? I wonder if it's going to be end up being a bad part. We see that a lot with just... You know, stupid parts that are, 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 you know, common stuff that just goes bad. So, hopefully. Oh, yeah. And it's so funny because parts don't go bad slowly anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, they work, they work, they work. My batteries then do. they don't. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny how that works. It used to be, in, in the old days, batteries, you got like a slow crank, like you were saying on your FJ. You hit the key, it give you like a rrr, a rrr. And, and you knew that uh, I'm due for a battery. Nowadays, cars run fine, batteries uh -huh. crank like normal, and then they don't. You know, the first they, battery, they, the first battery I changed on my Impala, uh, so it came, I had the Delco battery when it was new. I remember I had driven, I, I don't, no, never drove the car all the time, but I had driven it around that day. Uh, we were having a party for my daughter, so I drove it around all day. I was making stops and doing things, so all day, start, stop, start, stop, all day in June. So it was, you know, warmer right. weather. I parked it in my neighbor's driveway across the street so it would be out of the way because we were having people over. And later that night when I went to get the car, I put the key in it, went like click and did nothing. I'm like, what? Nothing. And next day I went and checked and I said, what the hell happened? I thought it was a wire issue or something. No, it was the battery just failed like that after yeah. working flawlessly all day. And I said, yeah, yeah now that's, and I've had other batteries fail the same way. They just, like you said, they just heart attack, spike to the heart, done. <laughs> that's it, done. Yeah. So I had my irritating week. Uh, I, I think I told you the tracker is running very well. There are no check engine lights. Everything is performing well. My IAC valve is working flawlessly. Lucky. Did you adjust that valve before you put it in? Did, like this one calls for an adjustment procedure. Did yours? No. I, you know, it's funny because I did have adjustment issues with it. Uh huh. But what I ended up doing was... I purchased an IAC valve because I wasn't sure about the new IAC valve that the previous owner had put in the car. But I purchased a new one and installed it, but I unplugged the battery. Right. We and I let the, I let the, uh, the ECM just do its job, and it, it worked flawlessly. All right. We have a special caller on the line. Let's go to the phones in the front and say, hi, you're on with the motor mouths. Caller. Hey, guys. There you go. It's Joe D. Hey. What's hey, Uncle Avoon. What's yeah, happening, yeah. Joey? Wait I think you're dropping out there. Hang on a second. Everybody's dropping out today. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there's a bigger storm coming than I thought. Stay in Strange. school. Don't drop out, you know. But, <laughs> exactly. uh, I, I wanted to talk to you about your IX. Yeah, IX and batteries. So you, got, you got two things you got battle. The IAX, I think uh, I might have sent you that picture, you know, yes. via text. Uh, you know, they, they, make, uh, they make it by uh, Dexton, you know what I mean? So a little pl you plug it in and it stimulates the uh, computer signal to the IAC. Okay. okay. You, can move, you can increase and decrease the speed, you know, by, by a little flip switch. And, uh, you know, that, that's, the way it, uh, that's the way you can see how it operates. And then uh, if you want to... Make sure that the computer has uh, has control of it. Grab the grab the uh, power probe and uh, pull the pull wire plug, and uh, have have your lovely assistant or whatever assistant uh, just like idle the car, drop it into gear, uh, turn on the AC, whatever the case may be. And uh, if you hit the hit the four pins, and they they, uh, they alternate between positive and negative, power and ground. And you can watch from, you can look at the pretty twinkles of the uh, red and green light. It works pretty well, and you could see uh, the computer isn't getting the getting the right decision. 
Okay. You know, I know that the little bit of information I got so far was telling me you can check resistance of the coils, but they didn't give me a measurement. And there's 40, also a... 40, 50 ohms. Okay. There's also a spec for voltage. The problem is, Joe, this car runs so bad at idle. The last time we had it running, we had to start it like five, eight, ten times, and it would idle a little bit more each time, and finally it would idle. Yesterday, we didn't even get that far. It's... it's it did. Yeah, I think it's the pintle is out it's way it's too uh, far, and it's just it's that just is true. impeding the airflow. Oh, it's it's just too slow, or is it is it rough? Well, according to the great digital dashboard in this car, it was idling around four hundred fifty RPM, right where Chris likes it. Uh, <laughs> You're right. Then wow. again, Mike, did, you know, it showed a quarter of a tank of gas, and Mike did pour, pour five gallons in this thing, and he says, "Hey, what's the gas gauge show now?" And I was like. Quarter of a tank. Like, it didn't move. So I don't know if I can yeah. trust that dash. Heads or tails. You got to see what, what you roll on the dice, wherever, how it reads, you know? Right, right. Uh, but in that case, though, uh, the, the rule of thumb uh, is that uh, you, you should run the car. There, there should be a base aisle spec, which um, which we, you should uh, have, you know, should be able to find in the manual or right. uh, maybe all data that. Uh, the car should, with the IAC completely closed, um, at uh, you should be able to, you know, maybe like 500 RPM or something. Right. Uh, that you know, at that point, uh, it's, it's you know, the IAC should be able to control. Should you should be able to check the control there. Right. That's the thing. This with the IAC out, the Pintle, I can't make it move in either by pushing it or turning it. It doesn't move at all. Yeah, so, they're right. probably. Uh, they're probably just kind of creaky and. Uh, I think it's yeah. seized. <laughs> it's what it is. So it is seized? Yeah, more than likely. But usually uh, seized, it won't even retract or won't even extend, you know? It's extended because, like I said, the spec shows from the mounting flange to the end of the pintle an inch and an eighth, and I have an inch and three eighths. So it is fully extended. Ooh, yeah. yeah. So, and that's blocking off the airflow through the throttle body. Yeah, that. Yeah, I would say that that's a good uh, a good chance there. Uh, it's kind of like a guy shooting. standing there with his hands over the quadrajet saying, "Okay, how's it idle now?" And it's going, "Clock, clock, 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 clock." Yeah, they work. Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, all right. There's, yeah. Well, we'll continue on, Joe, and I'm sure I'll be uh, I'll be talking to you and picking your brain right, on well, stuff. Me. You got it, man. Absolutely. All right. Hopefully, we'll get to talk to you some more in the future. Yep. All right, let me go for now because we gotta. We're gonna be uh, wrapping it up in a minute. All right, very well. Thanks, Take Joe. Care. Have a great. Take bye care. Bye. Be right. safe. So long. Uh, was a great Joe D. Yes, and uh, do do me a favor. Find one of those O rings. There's a regular rubber O ring, and put it over as a gasket on the IAC valve that you have in in your hand, and and reinstall it. What you do is you create a little bit of gap there. That will, I bet you the car will idle, it'll obviously idle better, but it may tell you that the, the, uh, uh, the IAC valve is frozen. Did you see that somewhere on a site or something? Did you find that as a tech thing? No, actually, okay. that was an experiment with my IAC okay. valve. Because right. I actually got my, my, got the tracker to idle at about, I'm not lying, about 75 RPM. Oh, boy. Yeah, this thing is like 400. Like I said, the, the, the pintle is too far out. I know what it's doing. It's blocking off the airflow. It's like someone putting their hands over the carb. So right. w until that pintle can move, you know, I don't think there's going to... But now it's like we have to buy another part. You yes. Know? And... I don't have to use one of those laying around, so. No, no. I, I wish I wish I could send you my old yeah, one, but it's probably not the same one. Because <laughs> so. I'd be glad to send it out to you. <laughs> well, so we'll see. We'll work on this, and we'll get to the end of it. But you know what? For now, we got to get out of here. Kim's coming in with Thunder Road, Best of Springsteen in the band. I know people love it more than uh, they love us, so they're going to listen. Chris, we'll see you next week uh, with more stories from the trenches. Yes. What do we always say? Don't follow us home and keep a close eye on your pintle. Right. So Chris Woods of Ray Guarino, Motormouth Radio out, 90.3 WHPC. See ya. See ya, bye.